First, I start off by taking my stiff felt and gluing my center pieces on it with some Gorilla Glue. Then I take my beading needle, these are tulip needles size 10, and my thread, which is Nymo size B, and I thread my needle and I'm going to knot only one end of it. Then I'm going to use beeswax to condition my thread. So taking the beeswax, I just hold my needle onto the wax and then pull my threads through to fully coat them like so. Then I just go over them with my fingers to evenly distribute the wax. Now we're going to start by coming up on the side of our center piece. And I like to start out with six beads. This is recommended for beginners. You can use more beads as you get more comfortable. Push the beads down to the felt like so. I like to push them around with my fingers and then stitch with a little bit of a gap after the last bead. Now we're gonna work through and start tacking the beads. So working backwards, we're gonna tack between every two beads like so. You don't have to pull too tight, just pull the thread until it goes between your beads like so. Now keep working your way back until we get to the beginning. And that's basically it. It's super easy, it just takes a lot of time and a little bit of practice. Finally, I like to do one more stitch to make sure everything is secure. So come up at the very start where we began, pull your thread, and then I'm gonna put my needle just through the beads. This helps straighten them out as well as makes them extra secure. And then we're gonna repeat this process all the way around. So again, I'm gonna grab six beads, go ahead, tack between every two of them, and then go through the beads. And that's the basics on how to get started beading like for a part two if you want to see the whole process. Here's how to add rhinestone banding to your beadwork. You'll need some glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue in the gel formula. To get started, I'm going to bring my needle up through the middle of this long line here. I find that's the easiest place to start. Then push a little bit of glue out and carefully dab a teeny tiny little bit onto your felt. If you use too much, use a toothpick to get rid of some. Then I'm just going to carefully place my rhinestone on top of that glue. You can use tweezers, it'll be a little bit easier. Once it's in place, make sure to press it down for 10 seconds to make sure that it bonds. And then we can get started by tacking down between the rhinestones. So I'm just going to hold my rhinestones with my non-dominant hand and use my dominant hand to do the tacking. Now we're going to go between the little rhinestones just like this and you can go between every single rhinestone or every other rhinestone if you're working on a big long line like this one. But I would recommend going through every rhinestone when you're working around corners. Tack all the way around. Once we get to the end you'll see that we have some excess chain so now we can trim it off. I'm cutting this rhinestone here because it's a little bit extra and it's going to fit nicely once we push the chain together. Get a little dab of glue, carefully dab it right where we want our rhinestone to go, like that, and then place your rhinestones gently on the glue. And don't forget to press it down for a few seconds to make sure that it sticks. Then we can continue and finish tacking these last couple rhinestones down. Once they're all tacked, you can tie off, and ta-da, we've added a beautiful sparkly little row to our beadwork. The next step is to cut out your beadwork. I recommend using small scissors. These ones are a little bit too small, but they'll work just fine. To show you, I'm gonna trim from the back side so I can see my stitches and avoid accidentally trimming them. This might be easier when you're a beginner. I typically cut from the top. I find it a little bit easier and just trim away from my stitching. Then I'm going to use a lighter to melt down the edges so we don't see all of this white felt. This takes a little bit of time, but it helps to also seal the edge of your work. You'll see that it actually melts a little bit. Just again, you have to be really careful not to go too close and accidentally burn your threads. And that's it. Now we're ready to do the edging. Who's ready for part five? How to add your backing to your beadwork. I'm using glitter leatherette from Sunday Lace Creations and Gorilla Glue Gel. I like to secure my beadwork onto my backing first and then cut it out to make my life a little bit easier. Now I'll show you how I add my wire guard. So taking my beadwork, I'm just going to put my needle between the backing and the felt, starting just left of the center and pulling my thread all the way through. Then I'm going to grab two beads 
and I'm going to go to the right of the center about one rhinestone over. Pull tight and then put my needle up through the second bead or the one on the right side. Now I have a base, I can add my wire guard, also called a thread protector. Put my needle up through one side and then grab six beads. Ignore that I grabbed five, you'll want to use about six. Then go down through the other side of your wire guard. Pull your beads tight like so, and then go down through the left base bead. Just the bead like that. Pull tight, get your wire guard in place by moving it around with your fingers like so, and then go through the beadwork, going all the way through from back to front like so, and then put your needle up through that same bead one more time. Then we can start beading the edge of the beadwork and finish our project. Now that we've finished securing our thread protector, we can go ahead and start with our beaded edge. I'm going to start by grabbing one bead, like so. Because we have the beads on the wire guard, we want to make sure that we're not overcrowding. Go through both layers, pull your thread tight, and then put your needle up through the bead from the bottom to the top, like so. And make sure to pull tight. Now I'm going to grab one bicone, larger bead, and one seed bead. I'm going to push them down to the base so I can measure approximately where I need to stitch and then go ahead through both layers and then up through the seed bead only and pull tight. Now we're going to go ahead with one light pink seed bead and one dark pink and go through both layers like this, then pull tight and go up through the second seed bead or the dark pink seed bead. Then you're just going to repeat this process all the way around the beadwork until we get to the very end. Once I get to the end here, I'm going to go up through my seed bead and then to finish off, because it is lined up perfectly, I am just going to put my needle down through that base bead that we did the wire guard on, like so then go through both layers from front to back, pulling nice and tight. And then to do my knot, I'm going to put my needle underneath the thread that's connecting the base bead, just under the thread like this. Then I'll take my thread, wrap it around the needle a couple times, and pull tight to create a knot. And finally, to hide the knot, I'm going to put my needle up through that base bead as well as through the base of the wire guard. You'll see here in a second, just like that. And pull, and this is going to help that knot disappear underneath the bead. Perfect. Then you can just trim off your excess thread and you're all done. What tutorial should I do next? Let me know in the comments. How to add jump rings to your beadwork. I've prepped my earring with backing material but haven't glued it down. You'll need jump rings, these are closed rings, and Gorilla Glue. I'm going between the felt and the backing and placing a tiny dab of glue right under the lever back. Then place the jump ring so it shows just slightly over the edge of the felt. Now, you can secure your backing with the Gorilla Glue and start on the edge. When you get close to the jump ring, make sure you start working from front to back. Once you reach the jump ring, tack the edging through the jump ring, then put your needle back through the jump ring and through the second bead just like this. For your next stitch, tack the edging past the jump ring to secure it in place. Now you can continue and finish your edge. Now take an open jump ring and connect your components together to create a tiered earring. And ta-da! This is the final product!